Hi, Cancer, Sun, and Rising. Welcome to your November 2023 Astro Update. It's Rena here, and this is Scorpio season um, in November, at least for the first few weeks. So that's very cooperative energy for Cancer, Sun signs, and Ascendants. And uh, this is actually aspecting your um, fifth house, which is a great place. I mean, this, you know, I want you to think about November's in general for you. And if you tend to have happy experiences at this time of year, because, um, the trine that Scorpio placements are, well, I mean, transits, I should say, um, are making, can be, you know, coming from that fifth house, which is the house of love and creativity and pleasure. Um, anything that you do for fun, to me, that's a great thing to have these transits going through this area. And, you know, it go, then you go into the holiday season with uh, Sagittarius, and that's more like business as usual, because that's the sixth house. So it's more of your workaday world, but at least for the first three, but I was going to say, but then, you know, it's the holiday season. So, um, at least in United States, it kicks off in late November because of Thanksgiving, maybe in other places, you have to wait until December to feel that holiday vibe. But, um, yeah, so we're coming off of eclipse season and, um, the one that is on the, the, the 20th of October, because I'm recording this before that date, um, that one will be in your 11th house. It's the last one in the Scorpio and Taurus pair of eclipses. And so that is hitting this very social area for you and um, but also the house of gains. So you may see some financial boost uh, towards the end of uh, of October and even into November because the eclipse date isn't necessarily when everything goes down. It could even be before the 28th of October. But once we get into November, we're going to be dealing with other influences. So the sun is in... Um, Scorpio, so it is in that fifth house for you, and the sun rules the fifth house in astrology uh, with the sign Leo, so it has uh, an affinity for that that house to begin with, so you're going to find all kinds of creative things to do. Maybe it'll be very creative if you're artistic, but um, for other people, just having fun and just letting your hair down. Cancer is a sign I think of as rather serious. I know that, I think they said that more comedians were born under cancer than any other sign. I'm not sure. I do know some very funny Cancerian comedians. But um, I also think that sometimes comedians, it's like the sad clown, you know, the person who, because cancer feels very deeply. So Obviously, there's always going to be that sentimentality that, um, you know, kind of, oh, you know, why does, you know, the good old days, you know, why why can't life be as wonderful it was back in the day and those kinds of feelings. So um, speaking of <laughs> feelings and water signs, on the fourth of the month, Saturn goes direct at zero degrees of Pisces, the other water sign. And uh, so this has been in your ninth house. And um, yeah, that's a that's an interesting place to have Saturn. I had Saturn going through my ninth house as well. And it was no biggie, um, I think. I mean, I'm trying to remember because remember that Saturn has a three-year cycle or two and a half years, you could say, but because of retrogrades around three years. And so it's, it really hangs out in one area for a bit of time. So I, what I would say with cancer individuals 
is that because Neptune has been here for about a, a dozen years, that that is a bigger piece of the puzzle of how these transit transits have been affecting this house. Because if you have Neptune in your ninth house, ninth house to me is organized religion because it's about um, any kind of philosophical framework. And so, of course, organized religion falls into this category. And um, Neptune will make this area very, very, like, far out because Neptune is not affiliated with any particular religion. Um, it's like the spiritual realms. It's the psychic. As a matter of fact, um, there are actual religions that say it's bad to have these abilities or to do these things, you know, divining astrology. Well, I don't, I don't know if I would put Neptune with astrology, but yeah, I mean, anything that is spiritual in nature or psychic or yada yada, will fall into this category. So um, I, what I think that this has done for cancer people is if you were brought up in a, in a strict religion is that you're kind of becoming more mystical, which I think is a good thing. Um, I'm not against, well, I had Pluto go through this house too. So I am kind of against organized religion at this point because I'm against dogma, and I never thought I would say that. I was always very respectful of religion because I've always felt like, well, at least people are thinking about God, so i got to give them credit for, for that. But now I think of it as mind control. And I'm sorry, that's, that's Pluto for you, and Pluto's still in my ninth house. Pluto ain't done with me yet. So um, this is something that can be very... Um, you might even have... Um, mystical visions. Um, you know, I have a video for people who have their natal Neptune in the ninth house. And I actually, I was quite surprised at people who wrote to me afterwards to tell me about their experiences. I didn't really expect that video to get many views. I don't know how many it has right now, but I, I just didn't think it was something that was a big deal. And there are people who can see our archangels. They can see, you know, Krishna or, I mean, and I always think to myself when they say this, um, okay, are you really, are you pulling my leg or what? You know, because I'm kind of, you know, I think there's healthy skepticism and, um, you know, they, they see deities. And so, it makes sense in a way because there are people who are very devoted to a particular uh, figure like M Mother Mary or something like that, and or Jesus even. I don't know, how, well, I don't know how many people see Jesus, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, maybe like a near-death experience, but like these other deities, they definitely seem to see them. And they could even be, you know, other, maybe like Egyptian gods or goddesses and other, you know, things like that. So anyway, not to go on too long about that, but Saturn here makes things more grounded. So if, for instance, you have been getting more mystical and you wanted to um, maybe become a yoga teacher, I always think of that with the ninth house because the ninth house is long distance travel. And I feel like when you have Neptune in the ninth, you have this urge to travel, but you want to, you're doing it for spiritual reasons. So you may want to go to temples, you know, ashrams and places like that. And you're doing it because you want to maybe have some kind of, um, inspiration and go to where it started from. I've heard people say that about like, oh, I want to go to India and study yoga because that's where it all started. And, you know, that, um, I think that could be really cool, but people don't, I think sometimes people don't understand that when they study 
Hatha yoga, it depends on, you know, who you study it with, because there might be like a more secular version of it that, you know, people can be taught. And you don't have to go to India to be taught the spiritual version. Um, you just have to, you know, really vet where you get trained and um, all of that. But you may just have an urge. You may just be like, I want to see like these temples or even like some churches um, that are just beautiful. The Sistine Chapel or something like that. But anyway, um, Saturn is like, okay, what can we do about this? that can have a practical edge. Now, this could just simply be with your spiritual walk that you become more disciplined in it. Um, and that certainly would be, you know, a great thing. So basically, I don't think that Saturn is out of place in the ninth house. Um, I also think that with Saturn here, you might travel for work. And if you are a digital nomad, um, you could combine it. Maybe this would be the time when you would uh, combine work and travel. But that's kind of why I said yoga teacher in the first place. So anyway, um, sometimes I one thing I read is that there can be a spiritual test. Um, Saturn can test us and the spiritual test can be a test of your faith. And I do think that that can be the ninth house because this is Sag's domain and Sagittarians tend to be very positive. I'm a son in Sagittarius and we tend to have faith that everything's going to work out. And yet um, Saturn can, you know, put that to the test. And this, like if you have a spiritual belief and I would say like a religion, this can put that religion to the test. Maybe because of something that's happening, you know, in your life that you're trying to lean on um, your religion, and you may find to your disappointment that your religion doesn't give you that comfort. Uh, I, I just thought of an example, which you might not like. I'm not saying that you would do this, but let's say that somebody has an affair and they feel really guilty about it. And they try to find redemption through their religion. Like they're still okay. And maybe they even confide in their priest or their pastor. And they get a negative thing like, oh, you should be ashamed of yourself or something like that. And that kind of like makes them um, feel disconnected with their religion. Even if that were to happen, it can be a catalyst for you to find something that is more in alignment with you at this time. I'm not saying find a, find a belief system that condones cheating. That's not what I mean. I'm just saying that we all make, we all make mistakes. We all have vulnerabilities and that includes infidelity. That's just life in the big city. I don't care what anybody says. Um, it happens and it doesn't make somebody a bad person as long as they have that sense of, to me, a healthy guilt that they are not doing something right. Even if they, even if you fall in love with somebody else, you know, the person that you're with deserves that, um, deserves the truth, but you know, maybe it's hard for you to bring it out and that's understandable. So, cause you don't want to hurt someone. So anyway, you might have some kind of thing that happens and that could alter your spiritual beliefs as well. Um, but now, it's, but this has been you turning it within yourself and now Saturn is direct and, you know, I think it can be very good for moving forward um, in other areas and, and this is the house of expansion. So hopefully this can help you career wise as well. On the 8th, Venus goes into Libra, a fellow cardinal sign. So it's going to impact your fourth house of home and family. You may be giving your house a paint job or buying new furniture. Um, Venus can be money. So getting money from the proceeds of a house, having the money 
to buy a house, sprucing it up, getting new furniture, like I said, you know, spending. Venus can be like luxury items, so maybe like something you don't necessarily need but you want. It can bring harmony within the family of origin. Um, you might get money from your mother or benefit from her financially in some way. On the 13th, we have a new moon at 20 degrees of Scorpio. And that is in that um, fifth house again. So for people, <laughs> I use that example of having an affair. Um, I might not be <laughs> too far off the mark here because this is the house of recreational sex. Where is Mars? Oh, you know what's funny? Mars is in that fifth house because it's in Scorpio until the 24th. <laughs> so that could be Mars is the sex drive. So in the house of recreational sex, you might be really, um, <laughs> I was going to say really horny. Um, but, but in any case, I mean, be more serious about it. There might be something along these lines because recently Pluto has gone direct in Capricorn. So, um, and it was, ret you know, retrograding. So um, that was in that house of marriage. It went back into that house. And, and truth be told, it only went to zero degrees of Aquarius. So there's every chance it was still there the whole time. But um, just pretending that your eighth house is zero degrees, zero minutes of Aquarius. And then um, on the 22nd, so anything, uh, you know, with that fifth house new moon, anything to do with new beginnings, with love, with creativity, with children. I mean, it could even be working with children, by the way, if that's something that you have been doing in the past um, or, you know, aspiring to do. On the 22nd, the sun goes into Sag, and then on the 24th, Mars goes into Sagittarius, and this is the sixth house of work and, and health. And so definitely some of you may be getting new jobs. Uh, well, I would say, you know, look to December with the new moon. That might even be more of the case. Um, the new moon in Sagittarius is taking place a day before Mercury retrograde. And I think that one might be in Sagittarius. I'm not sure if it was Sagittarius or Capricorn, but um, in any case, this makes you getting down to brass tacks, getting down to, um, you know, thinking about or, or doing things with, career, uh, not career, but we, we would say work. The career sector is a 10th house and this is a 6th house. So it's like just the day-to-day -day details um, that comprise your life. And sometimes it involves work, sometimes it doesn't. I'm talking about employment. Uh, you might be retired and Mars in the 6th house could be you um, volunteering. Or if you've retired, you're like, you know what, I'm going to go and get a seasonal job because this is the time of the year. They need extra hands, extra people. Um, so it doesn't have to be just people who are employed. Um, it could be people who are going back into the workforce or uh, volunteering. You may feel an urge to exercise with Mars in the house of health because Mars is very physical. There may be um, some kind of conflict in the workplace. Mars can be some kind of conflict. Um, and that can definitely, you know, lead to leaving a job in some cases if the person doesn't like what's happening. Like if you're having any kind of, well, I was going to say if, you, if you're having, um, some disputes with your job, like your salary or anything, then you might just stalk off. <laughs> Mars can be very uh, impatient and impetuous, which means very rash. 
on the 27th, um, there's a full moon at four degrees of Gemini. Gemini is a sign before you, so that um, 12th house, this is very, <laughs> this is Pisces domain, so I spent so much time talking about those Pisces transits. Saturn and Neptune. Um, but this is actually the house of Pisces. So the full moon here, I mean, this is the house of the dream state. So you might have some prophetic dreams or even in your waking state, you might be extra psychic. You're already a water sign. So you already got that going for you. And then on top of that, um, this is, can be the house of self undoing. So any bad habits. So full moon here can bring something to this point where you are like, you know, like you could call it a crisis or just this awareness where you are like, okay, that's it. I'm done with this. And then it, it works out in your favor. So that's really cool as well. And, and I would say just closure in general, because this is the last house. And of course, the cycle is always going around and around. So the end becomes the new beginning. And um, you're going to have a full moon in your sign in that first house in uh, December, right after Christmas. So there you go. Okay, Cancer, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I'm promoting my double astrological readings, an hour of natal chart analysis, an hour of transits for a special price called my deep dive reading. And I have other uh, package deals, one with the tarot and the deep dive called the whole enchilada. These are discounted because you're buying more than one reading. I do have these readings separately, as well as other standalone readings, career and love. You can find out more information at the link below. I'm at rainamoonastrology.com. Thanks for listening. Bye.